Morning crap to cream. I'm in the garage today. So I've had a few issues with the HIF carburetors on Millie. So I decided to fit the Weber 3236 that I've now taken off rows because I'm fitting the supercharger. So I fitted it and then I came across one of the problems was the washer here well the manifold here and the extractor manifold flange are there's two millimeters difference between the two so when I tried to tighten it up it didn't quite work so the these two flanges the out, two outer ones were okay but the two middle ones the exhaust flange leaked so now I've not done my best bit of welding in the world but I've now put two um, ribs let's call them that so they now take out the difference between the two flanges so that works on I've done two of them now so this one and the other one are done that one are done so I just have to uh, yeah I just have to put the two middle ones in and that makes yeah makes it all work might have been a better idea if I put the uh, if I put this on before I put the servo line on the vacuum so there you go so they'll now tighten up nicely on there and that exhaust flange will stop leaking and all the flesh the washers are now flush with the head I'm going to take the rock cover off and readjust the uh, I'll do a tighten down on the head to make sure now it's done a I think it's done about 800 kilometers so I'm going to retention the head after replacing it I know I already know it's I know the engine starts but I just know the center manifold flange leaked so anyway fix that now so this now back on the road again hopefully all well and good and I personally this is me personally I found better starting better economy with the other MG with this on with the third with the Weber on than I did with the twin SUs. The twin SUs, I I got them right to a point, but hey, they just never seem to they never seem to work right. And I would always play around with them. Whereas the the Weber, I just put it on, set the idle mixture, set the idle speed, and it's done. And if you want an easy life and you just want to drive the car, then that's fine. If you want to fiddle around with balancing and all that stuff, then fine as well. You know, it's your choice. I just find that quite good and very beneficial. All right, so that will be the end of this little snippet and then we'll see what else we do over the weekend. So here we are, Sunday morning, crap to cream, had a very frustrating Saturday. So since I've been running Millie, I have had this issue with the engine running a bit rough on idle. And lots of people have come up with ideas as to what could be wrong. Right, inlet manifold gasket leaking, carburetors jetted incorrectly, needle re-rates, all those wonderful suggestions. However, the most obvious one to me seemed to be the issue with the inlet. So I tried everything with the HIFs, I balanced them, I set them, and it still wouldn't run right. So I then put this Weber 3236 on. When I first started it, it ran beautifully. And while I was setting everything up to go right, I noticed that I hadn't put the servo pipe connection on this one here. So I got it off the other manifold and I put it on and I connected the servo pipe up and started the car and it ran badly. Now I didn't connect the dots so I then have been meaning to t tension down the cylinder head studs 
after it's been running for like 500 miles and so I tensioned all that up I reset all the the rockers and I started the engine and I could hear the cracking of the spark on number three and number four but it made very little difference to how the engine ran when I took number three and number four off so it pointed to something in this general area so then I thought it might be something to do with the distributor, so I put a spare distributor in, wound, wired all that up, set it all up, didn't make any difference. So then I went away and I had a, something to eat, and I came back and I thought about it, and the only thing that I had changed was the servo connection on the manifold. Now I started to join the dots together. So today I put all the 32, 36 back on again, set everything up again, put the original distributor back in again, put all the original plugs back in again, started it up and it runs like a dream. So I then sucked on this pipe and I could have sucked from now till doomsday, right? And I would not have got any vacuum in the servo. So the diaphragm in the servo has gone got a crack in it or whatever now I've never had an issue with finding that problem before so this was a bit unusual so yeah so that <laughs> it very frustrating I've been running it like this for quite a few what for you well a few months now haven't been able to figure out why it's been running rough and now I find out it's the servo this is the diaphragm's gone in the servo so the run the engine runs sweet now so it's, it's beautiful. Well, it's 110% better than it was before. So it all revs freely now. So that was the problem. The servo was gone. This diaphragm in the servo was gone. So this is more of a diagnostic video. Been very frustrating and it was a problem that I was not expecting to find. So I'll leave the 3236 on now and I realise now that it wasn't a problem with the HIF carburetors. And it's funny because the servo connection was on the right hand side on the HIF manifold as well so that's why I was having the problem with three and four I checked all the compressions 175 psi in each pot so no problem there all right so that's it so hope that maybe helps somebody anybody in the world <laughs> When they have this problem right don't don't accept that the servos right because uh, it might not be all right so again thank you for subscribers and watchers and all those people thank you very much indeed and hopefully somebody will get some value out of this one bye for now